So I let's do an inventory every time I stream and I'm going to keep doing this until, you know, those guys appear there, right? I like doing that. We do an inventory all the time of the comedy mothership concerning who they follow because I have a feeling these comedians are really weird, right? And they have these really strange insecurities and things about their industry. And one thing that we noticed early on, if you watch a lot of podcasts, is that they all had the comedy store on a real high pedestal. It's got legendary name. It was founded by a legendary person in terms of Miss Shaw, the people that passed through there, her approach to comedy, all these lustrous kind of folk stories we heard about the place and they kind of held it to a real high esteem. So when guys and gals did or did not get passed in the comedy store, did or did not get invited, it was really something that kind of ate away at their core because it was something that they kind of really wanted and it was something that would give them a lot of respect with their peers. It was just a really cool achievement, especially if you're a real fan and a student of the game. With how people look at Joe Rogan, and he's kind of replaced, he's like the modern version of the comedy store, in a person, right? He encapsulates, he personifies it. He's he's basically like an unofficial gatekeeper because his podcast is so big and he's such a fan of comedy that he will invite, you know, I said it before, one of the things I love about Joe Rogan, even though he's kind of gone off the reservation with some of his political views and much the, the older he gets, the more kind of odd he gets and the more richer he gets, I think it's just maybe a fact of life. But one thing I really do like about Joe is that he do, does go out of his way to invite random people on his podcast, like people he just likes. Like the other day, he has flipping Coffeezilla on his podcast, right? And I love Coffeezilla. But he's a very, he's obviously big on YouTube, but he's also a very small niche. But he must have just randomly stumbled across Coffeezilla's videos on flipping Logan Paul and then suddenly, or maybe and the FTX guy, and suddenly he's on he's on Rogan. So Rogan's good at that. And he's also good at inviting other comedians on there. And of course, when he invites comedians on there, the one thing comedians love more than the sound of their own voice is, you know, maybe second to maybe leaving their families is the ability to sell tickets they love being able to sell tickets so if they go on rogan they get ticket sales get a little bump in their followers maybe they get bookings other things it kind of helps them so because of that he's turned into an unofficial gatekeeper and now that he has a club the club is now a weird sort of like unofficial gatekeeper barometer of like where you are in the industry and whatnot and i'm sure there are comedians out there figuring out a way of how they can fly to austin to get on their knees and suck on that rogan schlong to get a booking on there or to be one of the 124 few people that get followed on there so every time that i stream we're gonna do this we're gonna click on the following count and we're gonna double check if our boys brendan and brian specifically have been followed on here because last time i checked the last stream neither brendan Schaub or brian cannon were followed by the comedy mothership brian cannon should be more annoyed really because he's you know joe rogan's 20 plus year friend but like i said previously you know joe rogan basically proved that he's all about joe rogan as soon as that you know rape allegation happened to cannon he completely ditched him and basically pretended like he didn't exist <laughs> for like a year and a half and only little by little now he's kind of come back into his life and he's been on a fight companion but ever since that rape allegation Brian Cannon's never been on the Joe Rogan experience on his own and Rogan also keeps his distance from those guys apart from the fight companion it's not like it's not the same and of course Brendan Shaw you know he's always sucking off Rogan anyway so that's never going to change but I would imagine them not being followed is a big deal and the fact that other people on there that have been followed like you know Andy Liederman and stuff so I want to check every single time that I stream to see what's happening on there because for sure it's eating away at them and the only reason why I laugh at this is because it doesn't really matter really do you know what I mean they're still smashing it, you know? They're still smashing it, in my opinion. Like, it doesn't matter really. Like, I'm laughing because I know it, it gets on, it kind of will get under their skin, but I'm not laughing to kind of mock them. I'm just laughing at how ridiculous it is that these grown men who are all in their 50s or, you know, late 40s with kids and stuff care so much about who follows them, where they get booked and stuff, when really they're still they're still sorry part of the one percent they still get to like do what they want when they want they get to make loads of money on their podcast they get to tour the country sometimes the world they have legions of fans everywhere like it's still a pretty decent life the fact that you're not pally pally with rogan shouldn't be a defining factor in your career but these guys are very weird very insecure maybe it's part of the art oh, i don't really know but anyway let's double check command f let's see is brendan Shaw being followed negative no brendan brian callan negative no brian callan um who else we want to check here uh, uh crystalia anything negative crystalia is off the reservation who else can i think of that's that's been cancelled off that kind of crew eric griffin let's see that's involved with him nope actually let's see Chappelle. does, does joe rogan follow Chappelle? that'd be hilarious if he does is he for Chappelle Lacey? No, he doesn't. Okay, cool. About to say that would be hilarious if so. But Annie Liederman's still there, right? Yeah, cool. Is Esther there? The girl that does the, the podcast with? No, she's not there. No, no, he doesn't probably know Esther. And that's it. So yeah, 